The moment of momentum equation uses cross products and integrals over surfaces and volumes and can be a little bit difficult to follow. Here's a little bit simpler explanation of what's going on. If we've got, covers the same physics, if we've got a control volume like this defined by this outer surface, this dotted line is the control surface, the outer boundary of the control volume, then the difference between stuff coming in and stuff going out has to be balanced, the momentum coming in and the momentum going out has to be balanced by applied forces. So, if something comes in going slowly and goes out going quickly, there must have been a force applied to accelerate it. In vector terms, that force is the difference between the momentum it has when it's coming out and the momentum it had when it was coming in. A force vector, a momentum vector defined by the direction of the momentum, uh, the velocity of the mass that's coming out and the velocity of the mass that's coming in. If we separate that into two components in a two-dimensional representation with x and y axes, then the sum of the forces in the x direction, the components in the x direction, times the x direction vector i, plus the sum of the forces in the y direction times the y direction vector j, will give us the total force vector that was applied. Similarly, we can keep track of the components of the momentum out and the momentum in. First, the uh, momentum out, mass flow times velocity component in the x-direction times the x-direction vector i out plus mass flow times velocity in the y-direction times the y-direction vector again for summed over all of the uh, elements where there's an outflow then minus the inflow in the same way taking into account the components. When we separate that into two separate equations for the separate components some of the forces in the x x direction equal to m dot u out minus m dot u in summation over all, the, all of the inflows and outflows same in y. Now we can do exactly the same kind of analysis with moments. These momentum flows in and out act just like forces. They produce resulting uh, uh, effects on the, on the control volume. So if we take the sum of the moments around the origin, that's around this location here, and it could be anywhere because we can pick our coordinate system wherever we want it. The sum of the moments around the uh, origin will be equal to the sum of the forces, their magnitudes, and the radius perpendicular locating that force relative to the origin. So to make that fairly clear, if the origin is here, and this is force F1, then it's an offset distance r1 perpendicular to the origin. So the important distance here is how far separated the line of action of the force is from a parallel line running through the origin. So there's r1 perpendicular times f1, the magnitude of f1, gives us a moment acting in a counterclockwise direction. If we apply the right hand rule, which says if I take my right hand like this, thumb up, align my hand with the radius vector and my fingers with the force vector, if it lines up so that it's going in the same direction as my fingers, then that's positive. That's a counterclockwise moment. If I lined it up and the force was going in the opposite direction, that would be a clockwise moment. So sum of all of the forces times the perpendicular radii, so there's F1. Here's F5 and its perpendicular uh, radius R5 and it's actually acting in the clockwise direction. If I look at my right hand rule, line my hand up with the radius vector, my fingers are pointing in the opposite direction from the force. So F1, R1 perpendicular winds up giving me a positive contribution F5, R5 perpendicular, winds up giving me a negative contribution. So this is generating a moment counterclockwise, F5 a moment counterclockwise. Over on the other side, we wind up with exactly the same sort of thing we had before. M dot times V is the momentum and it's equivalent to a force uh, effect on the control volume. Multiply that times the perpendicular radius 
to where the uh, flow went in or went out. And balance between what went out and what went in. So if things go out with more momentum or further away from the origin than they came in, then there'll be a net moment applied. So when we look at m dot v perpendicular, sorry, magnitude of the velocity times r perpendicular, let's look at m2 v2. It should generate a moment exactly the same sense as F1, so R1 perpendicular and R2 perpendicular are the same. M dot 2 times magnitude of V2, the F1 force will offset the thrust applied by M2 V2, so it's over here on the opposite side. Right hand rule, again, lining my hand up with the R2 uh, measure, the radius perpendicular out to this line of action. My fingers line up with M2, so it's positive. I get positive M2 times the magnitude of the V2 vector times R2 perpendicular. And each of these are positive quantities. So it makes a net positive contribution on this side and over on this side. That's a clockwise thrust tending to work against the F1 force that we had over here in the moment it generated. So there's the outflow. Now for the incoming uh, momentum we get a negative sign here because in is the opposite of out and then inside here we have to take the sum of m dot v, per v magnitude times r perpendicular for all the inflows. So here's our little right hand rule mnemonic. If we look at m3, m dot 3 v3 r perpendicular 3, which direction is that going to be in? Well, if we look at m dot 3, it lines up exactly with the origin. So r perpendicular is 0. It's neither positive or negative. So r perpendicular is equal to 0. That term makes no contribution to the moments, even though it did make a contribution to the forces applied to the control volume. Then we have this flow here going into the control volume m dot 4 v4 so we've got m dot 4 magnitude of v4 times r perpendicular 4 there's the r perpendicular from a line that runs through the origin parallel to the flow r perpendicular 4 times m dot 4 magnitude of v4 and if we line up with the right hand rule hand in the direction of the radius and fingers are in the direction of the flow so that winds up being positive there by the right hand rule but when we take it into account it winds up making a negative contribution overall because it's coming in instead of going out so we need to keep this negative sign to account for inflows versus outflows we need to make sure all of these signs here work out according to the right hand rule to sort out whether we're looking at clockwise or counterclockwise to get the signs right and we'll get a balance like this which gives us some information about the moments now if we took that same system and looked at the cross product of the radius vector and the force vector that's F1 R1 perpendicular if we integrate it over the control surface of the entire system, the in versus out sign would be taken care of by V dot N, which is positive for uh, a velocity vector going out of the control volume and negative for a velocity vector going into the control volume. So this is the mass flow out through a small element of area. And this is the perpendicular radius times the velocity vector magnitude with its sign adjusted to account for whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise all taken care of by the cross product here and the cross product here so this is Munson's e equation 542 for a steady situation and it handles the signs automatically but mathematically it's a little more complex